Hey, good morning, Choice Residential. Hope your day is off to a great start. Today, we're going to be talking about Form 220. This is the Cooperating Compensation Agreement, and this is the form that you'll use pretty much every time you're going to be making an offer on behalf of your buyer client so that you can identify what compensation, if any, the seller and or listing agent are going to be paying to uh, you and your firm. That way, your buyer knows exactly if they have to bring any additional compensation for you to closing. Now, it's an important concept to know that you need to get this form signed and agreed to by the listing agent and seller prior to actually submitting your buyer's offer. The reason is if you were to submit this form and your offer to purchase at the same time, a seller could simply sign the, sell, uh, the offer to purchase, send that back. Your buyer is now under contract, but they have ignored this compensation agreement, and now your buyer would be responsible for paying your full commission. However, they may have uh, selected the terms of their offer based on the idea that the seller or listing agent were going to be paying the compensation. So you want to make sure this gets agreed to and signed prior to actually submitting your buyer's offer. So let's dive into it. The first thing we'll see here in this note is big, bold letters. Do not upload this form to the MLS. This is not a suggestion. This is a very clear warning to you that per the terms of the NAR settlement, agents may not use the MLS to distribute offers of compensation. So do not put this form into the document section and do not use any MLS affiliated services such as Showing Time or Broker Bay to distribute it anytime somebody schedules a showing. Some listing agents may decide that they want to provide this form proactively, have their sellers sign it as part of taking the listing. That's a perfectly fine strategy. Just do not use the MLS or any MLS services to distribute that. You can leave this document in the home for when a buyer and showing a buyer agent and buyer uh, show up to the property, or you can email it to them directly as they schedule showings. Any of that is fine as long as you aren't utilizing the MLS. This is critical because it won't just be a slap on the wrist or a fine if you violate that. The MLSs have been tasked with actually terminating uh, memberships of agents who. Uh, have violated this rule more than once. So the first time you may get a very stern warning, uh, but it's likely that if you violate this rule more than once, you will lose your subscribership to the MLS. Let's go ahead and keep moving on. One thing you'll notice here is that in addition to the buyer and seller names being at the top of the form, it's also the property address. So just keep in mind, you will submit this form uh, for each property that your buyer may be making an offer on. Uh, you won't just recycle it. It is going to be specific uh, to each property. So we get into paragraph one talking about the fee that you are requesting that the seller or listing agent uh, pay you and your firm. There are two check boxes here. Uh, one is that the seller is going to be paying the firm, uh, the selling firm, uh, or two is that the listing firm will be paying the buyer agents or selling firm. Uh, the distinction here is that if the box is checked for listing firm, that means that in the listing agreement between the buyer and listing agent, the seller had, or excuse me, between the seller and listing agent, the seller has agreed in that listing agreement to offer some amount of compensation. So because the listing firm is collecting the total compensation and then taking part of that and paying the selling agent firm, that means that it's the listing firm that is actually paying the compensation. However, it's also uh, possible that a seller has not agreed in their listing agreement to offer buyer agent compensation. However, that doesn't mean they won't be willing to pay it. It just means it wasn't part of their listing agreement. They didn't set that amount up front. And so when you request this compensation using Form 220, you would then check the box that says the seller is going to be paying it because that will be a fee that they pay in addition to the compensation they pay their listing agent at closing. Now, you may be wondering, how are you supposed to know uh, which of these is the appropriate box to check? Well, you'll simply ask the listing agent. You call or email or text the listing agent. Ask them if the seller is paying compensation to a buyer agent firm, and if so, how much. And if the amount that they're paying is sufficient to cover the fee that you're expecting, great. You just simply check the box for listing firm and enter that amount into this first blank here. However, if the listing agent tells you that the seller is not offering compensation or at least has not offered it as in, in their listing agreement, you would check the box for seller. Now, it's also possible that you could need to check both of these boxes. Now, while you can't do that on one single form, you can actually execute two of these documents, one with the listing firm box checked, the other with the seller box checked, uh, because the listing firm may be paying part of it that they've collected uh, through their listing agreement, and the seller is paying the additional compensation. So it is okay to have two forms. 
They don't cancel each other out as long as you are checking the different boxes for each of those. Now, again, this could be a percentage, a flat fee, or some other compensation arrangement. This is all based on what you as the buyer agent has in your buyer agent uh, agreement that you are expecting to get paid. Typically, that is the amount that you're going to be asking for. However, just like all of this, it is completely negotiable. So you could have a particular amount in your buyer agency agreement, but you and your buyer decide that strategically it makes sense to ask the seller or listing agent uh, to pay actually less uh, than what you have in your buyer agency agreement, and your buyer may be making up the difference. That could come up in any number of different situations, including multiple offer situations in which you're trying to make your offer more competitive and put more money in the pocket of the seller. So you're asking them to pay less or potentially even nothing. Uh, this document could be used to uh, define that, in fact, the seller and or listing agent are not paying any compensation to you um, and that the buyer will be paying the full compensation. Paragraph two simply talks about uh, when the fee is earned and when it's payable. Paragraph three, we talk about the uh, term of this agreement. This is a blank that we don't know yet what is going to be the norm, but this is a built-in termination of this agreement. Now, be aware that if you do enter into a contract with the buyer and seller, um, then this contract automatically continues forward until that property closes. So even if the date that you enter into paragraph three comes and goes, as long as you have gone under contract before that time, then this agreement is still in effect. Uh, while I don't have a best practice or standard or norm for the amount of time we would put in here, um, I would think right now that it would make sense to put enough time to get you through your expected closing date. Um, and if that closing date gets extended, that's okay. The language in this agreement um, makes it so that this uh, compensation agreement will run all the way through closing of the property. Now you'll notice on the signature page on page two, that not only will the agent for the listing firm and agent for the selling firm or buyer agent firm be signing it, but the seller will be signing it because they are agreeing to what's being paid and the buyer is signing it to acknowledge that they've received this and they are consenting to you receiving the amount of money listed here. So if you have questions about this form, please make sure you're reaching out so that you have a full understanding of how it works. Because as I mentioned, this will be a document that you will see uh, after August 17th with basically every single offer that gets presented either as a buyer agent or a listing agent. As always, I'm just a phone call away if you do have questions. Until next time, take care.